Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Thank you for joining us on your city manager's report your source for all the local hot topics happening right here in your city oshkosh as well as a preview of the upcoming city council meeting agenda for the upcoming city council meeting i'm your host emily mikowski joined by your assistant city manager john fitzpatrick who is sitting in for city manager mark roloff today so john thanks so much for filling in today thank you for having me emily so we've got another packed episode we're going to go ahead and dive into our hot topics of the show uh, for the first half of today's show take a little break and then return with the review of the council meeting agenda for tuesday june 23rd 2015. Uh, so, John, first thing we want to talk about here is uh, the Inclusive Playground. Mm -hmm. uh, they recently had their ribbon cutting on Friday, June 5th, uh, and it was a hit. It was great. It was, we had a lot of people come out from the community. This was truly a project that really engaged all the citizenry and mm -hmm. um, provided an opportunity for them to come together and try to um, create a venue that could be accessible for everyone in the city, mm -hmm. and that, that really was what it was all about. And so they had uh, not only the, the official ribbon cutting ceremony, but they also had, you know, snacks and entertainment. I think there were some, uh, some princess characters out there for the kids and everything. Uh, yeah, there they are. And um, it was really just a really fun event, a fun Friday night for the whole family. As you can see, there was a great turnout. And when they did cut that ribbon, uh, I know that those kids ran into the playground and it was just nuts how many how many kids were running around on that right that right playground. you know I, I had some people come up to me and talk to me about the inclusive playground and you know oftentimes a project like this is just associated with um, maybe um, children that might have disabilities but I had a lot of elderly people come up to me and say you know I'm I'm older and I like to go to the playground with my my, my grandchildren and I have a walker mm -hmm. and this is really gonna be great for me now because you know, I can enjoy the playground with my grandchildren. And I just thought that was a unique perspective, I think, that doesn't often get come across when a project like this is created. It's, it's great for all the children, but I mm -hmm. think it's great for the adults as well. Oh, definitely. And, uh, you know, what's different about this playground is uh, it's got, you know, some wider areas that uh, if you've got a wheelchair or walker, you can get through. And the, the, the ground of the playground is a special material, right. too. Right, right. So. It's a little safer. It's a little softer. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's really going to be uh, put to good use. Yes. Yeah, so great addition to South Park. We encourage everyone to get out there and take a look. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is, it's a pretty hot topic right now, is the Murdoch Road Diet situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you can give us a little bit of an update on where that's at right now. Sure. Um, a great deal of focus primarily has been on bike lanes. Mm -hmm. You know, should do we need them? Do we not need them? Do we need them in certain areas? Do we not need them? And, um, you know, that's one component of a road diet. Um, there are a lot of different components, why it's important, the idea of safety. It looks like we have a graphic up here that that really explains it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the visual on the left really talks about a traditional four-lane roadway, and then the, the visual on the right talks about providing space for, um, dedicated space for bicyclists. Yes. Um, one thing that's often overlooked, you know, people think about it as cutting the lanes from four to, four to two, um, but really the idea is in both directions you still have two lanes because you have that center lane that can be utilized by traffic mm -hmm. oncoming and, and ongoing right and um, that dedicated area for bikes just makes it a little clearer for people to see exactly where those bikes should be and for the bicyclists so Definitely. that's um, that's one of the features another thing to be to consider in regard to the to the road diets is um, studies have shown that it has greatly reduced uh, crashes yes. mm -hmm. and I know that that was an issue that we talked about with the public with roundabouts and I think folks were a little hesitant to consider that new um, <laughs> road structure Just a little hesitant on those roundabouts, yeah right? <laughs> but I think um, that people now that they've had an opportunity to to work with them uh, we've had a lot of positive comments and both of the things associated with both of these um, traffic control measures through design are intended to re increase safety. That's really what it's about. 
Um, but I think we need to make sure that people are comfortable with it and that they, they're they educated. And so that's, I think, what city manager Roloff intends for us to try to work on, to, um, to take a look at the safety issues, take a look at um, some different alternatives, and then bring that back to council um, before any more action is considered, so. Sounds great. One of those kind of to be continued right. type of things to right. look forward to, great. Um, another thing we wanted to talk about is um, some things about the health insurance. Now, there was recently a workshop, I think it was on um, the 9th, June 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, can you maybe tell us a little bit about what was talked about at that workshop? Sure, sure, I'd be happy to. We, um, the council um, in, in the past uh, several years, they've faced some difficult circumstances related to the budget as a result of health insurance. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that they wanted to, us to try to address was a forecast into how our health insurance might look in advance of the budget so they could be prepared for that. And we were fortunate that um, the preliminary news that we have is that our health insurance is stabilized and might be going down just a little bit. That's great. It is great um, because it not only impacts the cost that the employees have to pay, but also the city and the budget that has to be dedicated toward that um, particular benefit. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think the switch to our new health insurance copay program has helped with that. We haven't had quite as many large dollar claims as we had in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think those two things are contributing to it. And, you know, we're hopeful that it'll continue on this trend. Has the clinic had any effect on any of this, or are there any updates on the employee health clinic? Well, the employee health clinic, we just opened it up in February, mm -hmm. and it's really ahead of our expectations in terms of attendance. We're still going through the formalized staffing process to make sure that we can secure all the people that we need. I think we had projected, you know, almost four providers at the physician's assistant or nurse practitioner level because combined the city, the county, and the school district have about 7,000 covered lives. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're quite up to that. I think we're in the process of, of hiring right now um, some other individuals, and I think we'll be almost up to soon hopefully up to three and a half mm. but even with that said with limited staffing um, we're ahead of our projected totals in terms of attendance right. so that's a good sign it hasn't really been factored into our health insurance costs yet but i think when it is i think it's going to positively impact those costs as well so it's a nice thing to have in reserve oh definitely going forward yeah, lots of great updates um, and you know positive things coming out of this. Right. So we're very happy to hear all right. of those. Um, a couple other positive things that we want to talk about is, uh, you know, summer's finally here. There's a ton of stuff. We are the event city, um, and a lot of our city departments do have a lot of great events coming up. So um, one, the first thing we wanted to talk about was the museum, uh, the Art of the Brick is now on its way out. Yeah. Uh, it was a great exhibit. Uh, in fact, one of the most successful exhibits they've had. It, I believe it's it's the second most successful exhibit we've ever had at the museum. Mm. I remember we had Titanic. Yes. And that was just tremendously successful. But the Art of the Brick was right there. It was, uh, I think, our most second our second most successful. So Yes, just yeah, amazing. It was. I think uh, students enjoyed it, adults enjoyed it. Um, it's just fascinating the things that the artist can do with um, Legos. Oh yeah, and definitely. I, th I think it really created opportunities for dialogue with when uh, students and children have, um, visited the museum with their parents and it was something that I think the whole family could enjoy and, mm -hmm. and that's what made it a s successful exhibit. Yes, they had a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I know the library did some things that coincided with that with Lego contests and things like that. So really great exhibit. We're sad to see it go, but we are excited about the upcoming exhibit as well. Uh, it's called The Great War to the Great Gatsby. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's kind of a, a little bit of a history exhibit. It is, it's a little more history focused. And mm -hmm. I think for, uh, for folks that don't know about um, another exhibit that's going to take place at the pain yes dressing Downton um, it's it, that exhibit is going to focus on I think the fashion yes. associated with the successful television series Downton Abbey mm -hmm. I know my wife watches that <laughs> my my mother-in-law uh -huh. watches it and my it's daughter on my watches list it. too but so um, it, it'll go very nicely with that exhibit um, and I know I was talking to the museum director he said there will be a little bit of you know clothing and things on display that they do have in their collection uh, but there will also be other um, 
you know, things, mementos and things to look at as well right. relating to I, that time I period. think it'll be complimentary, and I think it's, you know, both of those venues are, you know, fantastic, the pain as well as the museum, and it, it's nice to see them working together to complement their, their exhibits um, with each other. Definitely. Well, we're really looking forward to that exhibit. I know I'm excited to go out and take a look at it. Yes. Um, another great thing to look forward to this summer at the Ashkosh Public Library is the summer reading program. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, it's not just for kids either. I learned That's this right. as I was at the library the other day, but uh, we had them on Ashkosh today. This theme, it, this year's theme is Every Hero Has a Story. Uh, they've got some really cool things coming up. Um, you know, it's just trying to encourage kids to read. 20 minutes or more each day, and each time they finish two weeks of reading, they'll earn a choice of a food coupon and um, some different prizes that they can have. So they've got Tom Pease and Stuart Stotts coming in. Uh, they can get tickets to that. They can get a balloon rocket. They can get a free book if they do this for six weeks. Um, and then just lots of different drawings and things like that. So that's only one part of what's happening at the library. They've got a bunch of events, so definitely go to oshkoshpubliclibrary.org and find out uh, all the different fun things that they've got going on out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. I think, you know, when students are home for the summer, oftentimes you hear, hey, there's, there's just nothing to do. Right. But, but I'm think, bored. <laughs> right. It gives them an opportunity to, to relax and, and also do some reading and... Uh, it's, it's a good thing. Yes, and I think they actually had a chance to win some water park passes as well to the Pollock Community Water Park. That's great. Um, and, you know, that's also currently open. The, the weather has finally caught up to us here, and um, it's open and available. The kids are out of school. Uh, it's, a, it's a great summer day activity. Absolutely. Um, another thing, uh, you know, this list goes on and on, and i got to encourage you to go to the park's website because they've got so much happening. Um, but a couple other things happening at the Leech. One of those is streaming live at the Leech. Uh, one of my favorite events during the summer is the concert series. Starts July 7th, goes through August 11th. It's Tuesday nights. Absolutely free. Uh, mm -hmm. Local bands, local music, um, concessions available. Uh, it looks like gates open at 5.30 with music from 6 to 9. And right. it's just a fun event. It Something, is. It's cost friendly. And I think it's done early enough where people can go and still enjoy it and still get home at a decent time. Oh, and, definitely. And, uh, you know, it's, as you said, it's, it's uh, music that is, um, I think, interesting for all ages. So. Yeah, definitely. And I know they've got some new artists, too, right. that they're looking forward to from different genres and things like right, that. Right, and I think it gives an opportunity for local artists to kind of showcase their talents, too. And mm -hmm. so that's a good thing for the community as well. Definitely. And if live music is not your thing, you can come out to the Leech for the, the movie nights at the Leech. And on Fridays, right? On Fridays, I believe. Yes, Friday, uh, July 17th is the, the first one. It's outdoor movie night. You can bring your chairs and blankets and pillows, whatever uh, you want to take in with you. Um, and the movie that they're showing is Disney's Maleficent. And I know uh, you were telling us before the show you saw the movie and I didn't did. mind it. I uh, know. I thought it was pretty good, actually. I saw it with my family and... I don't know. I think the ratings were a little low. Yeah. I, I thought it was pretty well done. So now I'm going to have to get out there Friday, July 17th and take a look for myself. Very good. So I think you'll enjoy it. Lots of awesome events coming up. Um, all of our city departments do a great job during the summer taking advantage of our event season. And uh, you can find all those different events on the city website. Just go to ci.oshkosh.wi.us and all of our departments are listed there for you to check out and see what's going on. Uh, one last thing that we want to mention here, uh, we're not going to have another show before the 4th of July, uh, so we want to make sure that we get one more plug in for the 4th of July parade. Uh, they have kind of changed the route up a little bit. Right, right. For people that are familiar with our activities downtown, they know mm -hmm. that we have our farmer's market. Yes. And that's hugely successful, and I think people want to be able to do a variety of things. So we wanted to provide an opportunity for them to access the farmer's market, but also still enjoy the parade. Yes. So, so they'll kind of be going on at the same time. Yeah, so the route has been changed a little bit. It looks like um, on the screen we have a graphic in, in regard to um, how the, the uh, parade's going to travel. It's going to start at the convention center and then go from CP to Bowen. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's going to turn and then travel down Bowen Street to Irving Avenue. And then I think from Irving Avenue it's going to end at Menominee Park. So yes. I think that'll be a nice... Um, It'll be a nice route, and it'll be a, it'll give people an opportunity to also 
take advantage of any activities that might be taking place down at, at Menominee Park. Definitely. The so the parade starts at 9 a.m. Uh, well, if you can't make it out that day, uh, if you're going to be out of town on vacation or anything, we do record that for CATV2 uh, with our host John and Judy from Helping Hands, another partnership program that mm -hmm. we do here. Uh, so just tune in to CATV2 uh, a couple days after the parade, or even I think they might even do it the day of the parade. Uh, otherwise, go to our website. We'll have it on there as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, one other thing, a little blurb that we want to put out there in about four or five days our channels are going to be changing here at Oshkosh Community Media Services on Time Warner we're going to be changing from channels 2 and 10 to 97-2 uh, and 97-10 or 97.10 and 97.2 depending on your TV uh, those changes are going to take effect on June 23rd uh, what you're going to need to do is just rescan your channels and uh, that's where your new channels will be located um, so just keep that in mind. It is happening Tuesday, June 23rd. That's the day of the council meeting. Uh, so if you're watching this, make sure you keep that in mind. We don't want to miss, want you to miss out on the council meeting, um, and uh, hopefully that won't cause too many, too many issues. So we're happy to bring you our programming, and we just hope to, to continue to do that in the future. Uh, so it looks like it's that time of the show uh, for any viewers to ask the city manager or the assistant city manager anything they want about what's going on here in their city. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the question mark is this week. John, so the question this week is why shouldn't grass clippings be mowed into the road? Great question. It is. It, it sounds like a simple question, almost like you're trying to trick me. Right. <laughs> but, but there are some impacts for grass clippings that are mowed into the road. And um, some of the more obvious ones are um, that people might not think about. Um, when the clippings are mowed into the road, they go into our storm sewers and then they end up in our case, in Lake Winnebago. Yes. And um, so you'll create some, the clippings will, will travel there. There's the potential for them to create algae blooms. And so those are more obvious, but mm -hmm. what people may not recognize is there are things that can travel with those clippings. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to those clippings going to, um, to, um, to Lake Winnebago, those algae blooms can restrict oxygen. It yes. could actually have an impact to the fish population there. Mm -hmm. So it's just not really a healthy thing. It's just not a good to thing. Do. Yeah. No. And so we saw some video of what not to do. Uh, they did sweep it up when they were done taping that video. Right. So you know, but that's uh, good. And you know, I think even it can possibly even clog up some of the some of the sewers that go into the right. Depending upon all the debris that's blown into the streets, yeah. I mean, it can be something that um, creates issues. So. If you can just blow it the other way, mm -hmm. it's not a problem. Easy thing to avoid. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, great question this week. If you'd like to send a question to Mark, simply email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us, and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. We're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, we'll dive into the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, June 23rd. We'll be right back on City Manager's Report. to know what's happening in local government? Stay in the know with City of Oshkosh Government Meetings, live on TV City Cable 10, online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, and on community radio WOCT 101.9 FM. Miss the live coverage? No problem. Catch replays on City Cable 10. Stream online from oshkoshcommunitymedia.org, or visit youtube.com forward slash Oshkosh Community Media Services. Stay connected with Oshkosh Community Media Services and the City of Oshkosh. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube. Sign up for e-updates. 
more resources, including video, at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. Oshkosh Community Media is your media on your schedule. Connect with us today. Welcome back to your City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. Now it's that time of the show. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the upcoming council meeting agenda for June 23rd, 2015. Uh, now, right away, John, the first thing we want to talk about is a presentation, a brief thing that that's going to be happening right at the very beginning of the meeting, uh, dealing with East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning. It is. It's a presentation, and uh, Eric Fowle is the director mm -hmm. of East Central, and I, I think he's going to be honoring City Manager Roloff. Yes. And I think if City Manager Roloff was here, he probably would have <laughs> glossed over this presentation. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to mention that, um, you know, he has provided um, representation from the city of Oshkosh on East Central for quite some time mm -hmm. since he's been here. And now with um, the election of the new mayor, Mayor Cummings has a, a special interest in planning. And um, they had some dialogue and decided that the mayor is going to be the new representative for the city on the... East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. So, Excellent. so I think it's 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 a win-win. Um, City Manager Roloff gets to work on other issues that he needs to attend to, but also it provides an opportunity for the mayor mm -hmm. to uh, to work on some issues that are very important to him as well. And and it's a nice gesture that they are recognizing City Manager Roloff for his time and his efforts. Very nice. Well, we're looking forward to that to kick off the meeting. Uh, next thing we want to talk about here is uh, to approve the Edward. Burn Memorial Justice Assistant Grant mm -hmm. uh, for the police department. That's about $18,000. I hope I pronounced that right. It um, is, and um, we're very grateful for any grants that we receive at the city because it, it helps um, provide an opportunity for us to diminish the, the additional costs that might be passed on to the citizenry. So, so this is much appreciated, even though it's only $18,000. Um, it's going to be put to good use. It's going to be dedicated toward... Um, some scheduling software that we use for our staff at PD mm -hmm. and also it's a it's a joint grant that's going to be shared with Winnebago County mm -hmm. I think they're going to be using theirs for um, body cams I think okay. to a certain degree but you know just to give you an idea of the diminished revenue that is being made available I, I remember when some of these grants were upwards of two hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars and and now it's been reduced to 18 wow. so we're very grateful for the amount that we receive, but those funds are diminishing from, yes. the, from the state and federal level. So. so we're always happy to get any little bit that we can. Definitely. Absolutely. Great. Um, we're going to breeze past. There's a nice long list of special events that uh, are on the consent agenda down to the new resolutions. Uh, now there's a couple here that are, relate with each other. Um, one is to approve resolution directing advertisement and sale of approximately $19,485,000. Um, and then another one here with at about $4 million. So maybe you can explain to us a little bit about what this is. I think it's called an advanced refunding. It is. You're right. It is called advanced refunding. And um, that's the technical term that we use for mm -hmm. it. But uh, for people that um, may not be familiar with that term, it's very much like when people refinance their home loan. Mm -hmm. So they have an opportunity to refinance that loan. They take a look at the interest rate that might be available. And um, if it is advantageous, they decide to refinance. And they look at a variety of different things. And this, for the city of Oshkosh, is very similar to that. So we won't know the particular rates that we may receive actually until the, the day of the council meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, our finance director and in concert with our city manager will take a look at that information mm -hmm. when they receive it and make a decision as to whether or not it's something that's in the best interest of the city or not. Okay. Uh, early, you know, we never know what exactly what might take place, but some of our projections indicate that you know, we could save upwards of uh, over six hundred thousand dollars if everything really you know, goes goes the right way. Wonderful. So we'll keep our fingers crossed yes, to see what happens. Definitely. Uh, and now might be a good time to ask you about um, our current Moody rating that we have right now. Right. I know I'm, we've been doing a lot of work refinancing. Our I'm glad you brought that up. We, uh, City Manager Roloff and our Finance Director Larson, just had a conference call with. Moody's recently, I believe, earlier in the week, mm -hmm. and it was a, it was a very good experience um, for folks that may have recalled 
um, our um, assessment for Moody's at the, during the last cycle, they were concerned about our debt limit. Mm -hmm. And they, they also provided a, 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 a caution as to um, where we are and where we might be headed. Um, but I know from um, having some discussions with both City Manager Roloff and Finance Director Larson that they said that this conference call went very well, that Moody's was very pleased with the steps that the council has taken in regard to our debt limits mm -hmm. and our um, financial plan moving forward. And um, although they understood that we needed to um, invest in a lot of capital improvements for stormwater and a variety of other infrastructure things, they also were trying to caution us that, hey, we were getting to a point that um, they would like to see us um, moderate mm -hmm. our vigor for some of these projects. So, <laughs> Which is tough to do. It is. It is because I think the citizens expect us to um, provide um, that infrastructure at a certain level. And right. there was some deferred um, maintenance that took place. But I think we're in a better place now. And I think the council has established some parameters for us in regard to borrowing and spending as we go forward mm -hmm. in the future. But I think we've we've done enough improvements where we are able to um, handle that kind of uh, reduced uh, project load as we go forward. So it was good news from Moody's and they were happy with um, with all of the measures that we've taken to address our debt. Yes. So that's good. And good news for us too, headed in the right direction. That's right. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, next ten, next thing that we want to talk about is uh, some announcements and statements, and this one is on the recognition of the police department and the parks department at the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation event. I believe you were at that event. I was. I was at the event last night, and um, I was very happy to uh, to witness um, awards that were provided to our police department in regard to uh, efforts associated with uh, the um, the purchase of our. Uh, command and Control Vehicle, mm -hmm. our CCOV, it's an acronym that we use yes. for that. It looks like we have a, a, a picture of that. And uh, they were very pleased with its impact on the community mm -hmm. and the ability for us to um, provide community outreach. That's just one facet of what this vehicle can do. You know, certainly we, we don't want to have to engage it if we uh, have a uh, a dangerous situation, mm -hmm. but it is a, a very valuable tool in that regard. It, the technology that we have available to us with the use of that vehicle is tremendous. And because we have a lot of special events, you know, there are things that it can be used for um, that provide different opportunities for us to manage the situations much more efficiently. Yes, and the other thing they talked about, I think, was the uh, inclusive park, which we did get to talk about That's earlier. That's right, we talked about that earlier, mm -hmm. and it was nice that they recognized that impact on the community. Oh, yeah. And we're very uh, grateful to the Community Foundation and their support of projects like that. And then recognition of our efforts on top of it, it's, it's really more than what we mm -hmm. could ask for. It's just wonderful. Uh, last item that we had on our list, uh, we'll just breeze, breeze over it, is it's going to be budget time already. Uh, so the city manager will be talking about some of the timelines. He will be. He'll be um, sharing some of those timelines with council, trying to firm up those dates and try to establish some formal um, formal time frames for us to work on that budget and mm -hmm. get it ready for their approval. Yes, and we can anticipate some workshops coming up, which we will be uh, airing on City Cable 10 as well. That's right. So that's going to do it for this episode of City Manager's Report. So, John, thank you again for filling in today. Thanks, Emily. Again, the City Council meeting is this Tuesday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 or online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. You can also listen to it on 101.9 WOCT, which is now also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all of your community and programming updates. Or check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, you can email it to questionmark at ci.ashkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode. So as always, thank you so much for joining us on your City Manager's Report and we'll see you next time.